Hello world, and welcome back to Real Talk with Rajan, where nothing is off limits. I am your host, Rajan Lewis. Now, here on Real Talk, everything is debatable, so on any given week, we could be discussing anything from sports to music to politics. You name it, we'll discuss it. Now let's get it cracking. What's up, Mom? Hey, Lucretia. Hey, Shell. How you doing? Thank you for joining us. Hey, Grandma. Oh, Grandma. Hey, Auntie. What's up, Lenora? Yeah. So please, if you haven't already, please share this video out and get some more viewers on the show. Um, so here we are at the end of 2017, December 31st, 2017, and we are back for one more episode. For this year, I'm really excited about it because it's the end of the year review. This has been a big year for me, um, personally, professionally, and otherwise. Um, I, I feel like I've grown a lot this year, and it's largely because of what I've been able to do with this show and the things that it's really challenged me to do. For those who don't know, Real Talk with Rajan is a live um, show that's done. I don't record this ahead of time. This is something that I do all on the fly. Um, and as I do it, of course, I mean, I don't do it all on the fly. I plan things ahead and stuff. But, you know, I have lighting. I have sound, I have um, video, and I run all of it by myself. So at times, you know, I may seem distracted or, you know, it may take some pause, some pauses where, you know, where you normally wouldn't see it on a television show. But they pay lots of people to do those things that I all have to do by myself. So I actually have felt like I've grown to, to learn to do it a lot better than I started out doing it. And I really have enjoyed the process. I've met some awesome people this year, um, just Thinking about my past guests as far as local celebrity, local celebrities, I just, uh, Miss Lenora was just on last Wednesday, a great, who just wrote a great book, The Mirrored Image of Me. Um, so shout out to her. Thank you so much for being on this year. Uh, Kimberly Bowman, thank you for being on this year. Um, Shakima Chapman, uh, Mike London, Mike Brown, um, Anjanae Davis. Great things, great things have gone on this year. But, you know, we don't come on Real Talk Real Ray John to talk about me. We come on to talk about what's happened this year. So before I get started with my first subject of this evening, I want to make sure I share out the video. If you haven't already shared out the video, please do. I greatly appreciate it. I'm doing it right now. Of course, I have to edit this part out when I make it live. Let's see here. All right. Events. So, what were your favorite com, uh, current events from this year? We've had lots of great things happen. Um, we've had lots of interesting happen, things happen as well this year. Um, everything from the no inauguration of a new president uh, to um, all the interesting things that he said this year are what he say, man of the year. What did he say? What you know, uh, our, our new president has given us lots of what he say moments. So I, I've definitely been a. Uh, it's been interesting to keep keep um keep up with what he's doing. Um, but it's been a great year. What what have been your favorite moments? I'm going to go through some that um I pulled up an article from Time Magazine. Um, the top ten viral moments of 2017, and I'm going to pull some of those things that they talked about out. And I'm going to share the link right here so that you guys can check it out as well if you feel like you want to. All right. So the first thing that they have is Michelle Obama at the inauguration. So if you don't remember, uh, in January, of course, we have our um, we have our inauguration of the new president. And as um, President Trump was being inaugurated, there was a picture of um, then First Lady President <laughs> First Lady Obama, Michelle Obama, giving uh, the side eye to, if not the president, to whoever was holding the camera near the president, which is hysterical because it led to one of those moments. Um, so shout out to Michelle Obama. You know, we, we still miss you, First Lady. So if you watch Real Talk with Rajan, know that I am a big fan of you and your husband, and I hope you guys are doing great. Um, number nine, uh, Beyonce's twins. Beyonce got pregnant with twins. Now, of course, people get pregnant every single day, but it's not every day that the number one name in entertainment gets pregnant. And that's Beyonce. I mean, she got pregnant with twins. She took the picture with the um she had the picture which was of her and the um like the the 
in like the forest kind of look. I didn't, I wasn't really sure, like the garden kind of thing. Very nice, you know, very big moment for her. Um, that was a, a big moment this year. Uh, Moonlight winning Best Picture over La La Land at the Oscars. That was a big moment, but it was a big moment not because of the fact that they actually won, but it was a big moment because of the fact that, if you remember, the people called out the name of La La Land and all the cast and crew of La La Land was on the stage and they had to correct them and say, no, the actual winner was Moonlight, which was hysterical, all right? Nobody, like, that was the funniest thing I've seen since Steve Harvey at the Miss America pageant. <laughs> um, what's up, Jason? What's up, Rashad? How you doing? Yeah, Shell, I missed Obama's too, man. Trust me, that's, that's oh, Jesus. Um, let's skip that one. Let's see. Kylie Jenner's, uh, Kendall Jenner's Pepsi commercial. If y'all don't remember this commercial, oh my gosh. So this commercial here was the one where it was in the middle of like, in the midst of the whole, you know, Black Lives Matter thing um, and how everything happened with that and the protests that were going on. And they just had the picture of the young lady who was walking with her hands with the people in the SWAT gear. Um, and Pepsi came up with this great idea that Kendall Jenner would, they would be having this big protest and Kendall Jenner would present a Pepsi. And the Pepsi would cause people to start singing and dancing and being extremely excited about the fact that Kendall Jenner had a Pepsi. And it actually led to um, uh, Martin Luther King Jr.'s daughter, I believe it was Bernice King, um, making a post that said, if only my dad knew the power of Pepsi, which is hysterical because, <laughs> wow, just, wow. Yeah, that, that was not a great, that was not a great moment. And I'm going like to, like I told you, I'm going to try to keep adding these links for you guys so you can check them out if you have not seen these things. Um, Kovafev, again, our, what he say? What he say? What did, I, oh, what did our president say? It's hysterical. Um, yeah, uh, Lucretia, if you have not seen that Pepsi commercial, you got to check it out. It's really, really sad, actually, um, that they thought that was a good idea, but it's hysterical in context. Um, but our president, our what did he say president of the, of, of the lifetime, <laughs> um, Donald Trump, made a post um, in, what was it, in May, which said, uh, who can figure out the true meaning of Kovafev? And co th that led to um, an outbreak of people trying to figure out what Kovafev meant. Now, of course, Kovafev was just the president not spell checking himself before sending out a post. He was talking about press coverage as opposed to Kovafev, but Kovafev became the joke. Um, and all of these things are definitely on the, on the, um, on the link that I provided. As I, as I mentioned before, this is the top 10. These were the top 10 moments, um, top 10 viral moments from top, Time Magazine for the year. On um, the solar eclipse, who can forget the solar eclipse? That was a big thing this year um, with everything that happened as far as, especially being in Charleston, well, the Charleston area, you know, I live in Somerville, but people were renting out whole houses, whole areas. Like you could not get a hotel or anything like that for the weekend of the solar eclipse. People were rushing to the East Coast to try to w find a way to see the solar eclipse. Sad story about that. So I went through and I spent, well, not really sad, but I went through and spent the money on the glasses. I only spent a dollar at Walmart. It wasn't, it wasn't the, um, it wasn't like, I didn't go spend like $17. I wouldn't spend like that much money on glasses, but I got the, the, um, the solar glasses so that I could look at the eclipse and all of that stuff. And then right before the eclipse, it got really cloudy and we saw nothing. It just got really dark and then got light again. So that was sort of a crock for us. It was like a train wreck for us. I didn't really care for that, but you know, whatevs. Um, it, it was it was cool for the rest of the country. I, I, there were lots of you know parties and pictures of people um, celebrating the um, celebrating the, the 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 solar eclipse. We didn't get to do that because again, it was really dark. Um, the creature says it was crazy. We didn't see the clouds cover it. Yeah, the cl clouds covered for us. It was, it was really, like, I wish it, we would have been able to really experience the solar eclipse, but we weren't. And my kids were sort of upset by it, but I, I wasn't. I just, just things happen. Um, very big moment that we talked about a lot here on Real Talk with Rajan was um, President Trump's battle with the NFL about the protests. Um, 
that apparently upset him a lot, and he decided to put a lot of his political power and behind the um, the protest that was led and still is led by um, Colin Kaepernick, uh, the former quarterback of the San Francisco 49ers, go Niners. And um, so that led to the protest of a lot of people. Just um, And Donald Trump really sounding off about, you know, the ratings of the NFL because that's what he cares about, his ratings. Um, and um, just things like that. So he made specific posts um, about that fact that NFL players or no one else should be able to practice their First Amendment right if it involves the flag. So as a veteran, I made my points abundantly clear on those things. I'm not going to dig back in there, but our president taking umbrage with the NFL definitely did um, lead lots of discussions this year. But the number one thing that that Time Magazine listed as the top 10 viral moments of this year was the Me Too, um, Me Too, I won't say outbreak, but the uh, the um, prevalence of women standing standing up and stepping up st- stepping up to speak about speak out about their um ish, their um histories with sexual harassment in the workplace and um sexual harassment in the workplace and all over um so that's that's been really big um stars all the way from Alyssa milano um stepped up just to 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 speak out against the the sexual harassment that's been happening in Hollywood, it started out in Hollywood, and then it really, it really blew up. Um, it blew up to the point that people started losing jobs. Um, and the Carolina Panthers owner, actually, um, Jerry Richardson, which I spoke about last week, actually is going to have to sell his team, the Carolina Panthers, because of some some charges that came up about him with sexual harassment. Um, once again, this is Real Talk with Rajan, and this is our end of the year review. I'm the host, Rajan Lewis, and I thank you so much for watching. There's some of you who who are on, who are on the feed who I can't. Um, see that you're in. So please make sure you comment, say something, I'll be able to, to respond to you. Um, I also found out, I realized, and this is sort of a cut into the end of the year review, um, that when you share the video, if you share the video, uh, like let's use Max Lewis, that's my mom. Um, if you share the video and a person comments on your feed of the video, I can't see their comments. So if you're making a comment and I'm not responding, it's not that I'm ignoring you. If you could go into the, the uh, main feed, and you could see, you could see, um, I could see your comments and see that you're in here. But thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, I've appreciated the support all year long. I know everybody can't watch the entire show, so if you you know got to cut out or whatever, I'm not, I'm not tripping. But I just want to make sure that I do tell you that I appreciate the fact that you're watching, and I try to make sure that all my viewers appreciate, um, know how much I appreciate it because you you don't have to do it. There's plenty of things you could be doing with your Sunday evenings, and you've been you've been rocking with me since August. So I definitely appreciate it, and I thank you so much for your support. But all I'm doing right now is my end-of-the-year reviews. I just went through the top 10 viral moments of 2017, and now I'm going to go into the top songs of 2017. I'm going to tell you my favorite songs for 2017. So there are lots of songs that came out this year that were really big, um, that people liked for whatever reason. But Ray John Lewis specifically liked some songs that I just want to make sure that I talk about. Top. Yeah, I put my list back up, sorry. All right. So and again if you if you have something you want to add to this, you definitely can. Um I'd love to you know share your comments. If you if you put a comment in here, I want to make sure that I do address it. Um, anything that weekend did, you know what? I got on the weekend really late. I mean, I mean, I got on them early. My cousin Delano introduced me to the weekend like really early. And I was like, nah, I'm not with this. I was not with the weekend early, but people apparently really love that guy now. And, you know, more power to him, you know, more power to him. I, I love, I love when people are supported, like support people that you like. If you like them, then you support them. And then, you know, you got what you got. Let me share this one more time. Let me see top songs. Sorry, I have so I also have to share the video every time I um, switch subjects so people can know that we switch subjects in case they want to get in on that part. Top songs of 2017. All right. 
So 2017, 2017 was a big year for music as well. Um, the one song that comes to mind instantly is Bodak Yellow. Bodak Yellow like was made by an artist named Cardi B. And if you don't know who Cardi B is, Cardi B pretty much is the epitome of started from the bottom, now we're here. She started out as a um, reality star, well, actually started out as a stripper um, in Miami. And then she um, moved to New York. I think she started in Miami, moved to New York. She was in New York. And then she, while on the show Love and Hip Hop New York, she started making a little name for herself as a rapper. And then she put out the song Bodak Yellow. And Bodak Yellow blew up. Actually, I think Bodak Yellow ended up being the first number one song um, by a female rapper, number one overall Billboard charting song by a female rapper, which is crazy. But that song is so dope. If you've never heard Bodak Yellow, I don't know what you've been doing with your life for 2017, but Bodak Yellow is probably song of the year. Um, it's all right, David, man. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Ariana, for joining us. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, Bodak Yellow was like, if you're talking about top, you, you won't be able to talk about 2017 without talking about um, Bodak Yellow, such, such, such a great song. Um, Rockstar by Post Malone. I don't really know that one, but people like it. Um, XO Tour LLIF3 by Lil Uzi Vert. So I don't like Lil Uzi Vert at all. I don't even like the song. But for some reason, I've never thought that somebody saying all my friends are dead repeatedly would make it to radio. And it did. And it became a really big song. And people really, really love that song which is insane to me. I really, really, really did not see that coming at all, but it did. And because of that, he's become like a mainstream artist in a way where people recognize his face and recognize his name all over. Sorry, I'm sharing this video again. Um, yeah, but so Lil, shout out to Lil Uzi Vert. I, I'm not a big fan of your work, but... Apparently people are. I think my daughter likes your music. So Ariana, if you if you do like his music, you can say in the comment section, Daddy, that his music is awesome and you just hating. And I'll be like, nah, I'm not hating. Um, let's see. Let me see. Let's see. Uh Rajan, wait, did I miss something? Tell me more. Maybe I did to reevaluate. The weekend? The weekend, I'm just nah, I'm just not big on the weekend. It's just his music. Well, I mean, when he first started doing his his music, it was it was mostly like um it was mostly like druggy music, to be honest with you, like I hate life music. And I, I'm not big on like I'm super depressed. I want to do drugs and kill myself music. I'm just not. That's just not what I'm in it for. I like to feel good and feel uplifted. And The weekend does not do that for me. So that's why I'm not a big fan of The weekend. But all right, the Lupe Fiasco album. I actually never finished the Lupe Fiasco album. This year has been a big year of listening to books for me. So Outside of like my favorite, favorite even though Le Lupe Fiasco one of my favorite artists, um, I haven't gotten into the, the, I didn't finish the Lupe Fiasco album, but I have it on my iPhone to finish. So thank you for reminding me about that. Um, let's see what other good songs. Mask Off. Yo, Mask Off by, by Future was a major song. The first time I heard Mask Off, I said, this song is going to be bananas. Even though this also is, file, you can follow this song under the, I never thought I would hear that on the radio list. The hook was Percocet, Molly, Percocet. Percocet, Molly, Percocet. Rep the set, got to rep the set. Rep the set, got to rep the set. That was the entire hook, which is insane. I never thought I would hear that on the radio, but apparently... That's what's going on in these streets. So that's what they talked about. Um, Kendrick Lamar, Humble, big song. Love that. One of my favorite songs, if not this year, ever. Like, I love that song. That song is so dope. Um, and just the way it starts. In fact, the entire, the entire damn album by Kendrick Lamar is bananas. I am such a big fan of Kendrick Lamar. And I will continue to be a fan of Kendrick Lamar because he makes great music. In that regard, DNA, also dope. Um, um, let's see what else we got. What else do we have here? Uh oh, did I close it out? Uh oh, I closed it out. Let's see. Gotcha. I never listened to an entire album. Any radio song from him? Yes, his radio music is definitely different from his um, his radio stuff is definitely different from his non-radio stuff. 
He's a very depressing person. He he depresses me quite 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 much. Um, Chance the Rapper, Chance the Rapper stuff mostly came out last year, so that'd be more of the 2016 stuff. But um, I mean, people dig Chance the Rapper. I like his stuff, but I'm not a uh, stan for for um for for him. Bad and Bougie. How can you forget Bad and Bougie? Right? Another another great song. Like, but it's another song that's like, okay. I mean, I, I have I have no idea what most of Bad and Bougie is talking about. They 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 say a lot of words, um, and they mostly slur together, so I don't fully um grasp what bad and bougie is actually about. I get that he likes girls that are, that are bad and that are bougie though. So it sounds like he enjoys hood rats, which is great if you like hood rats. So, you know, go for it. Um and also, because of Bad and Bougie, we got that awesome hip hop moment, which was Joe Budden and DJ Academics sitting on the st- sitting on the uh, <laughs> sitting at the BET Awards with the Migos, and they saying, "Do I look like I love a Bad Bougie? Do I look like I love a Bad Bougie?" So that was a great moment <laughs> for for this year. On um, the story of OJ for um for Jay Z was a big song. Um, that song is actually up for a Grammy, which I spoke about uh, spoke about a couple weeks ago. Um, Tunnel Vision by Kodak Black was a big song. I'm not a big fan of Kodak Black, so but Tunnel Vision is a dope song. Mr. Huff, how you doing? So, all right, so I got to pause here, y'all. Daniel Huff, Dan Huff was the clinician at Music Camp at Duke University, a Brightleaf Music Workshop during the years that I went there. I went there eight straight summers, and Mr. Huff, Mr. Huff was there every year, and Mr. Huff is a well a world-renowned um, musical clinician. So thank you so much for joining the show today. I really appreciate you being on here. Like the fact that you're here is sort of humble, is like really humbling to me. So thank you so much as I talk about hip hop. So I'm not going to be talking about hip hop long, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Huff. I'm just talking about the best songs from this year. Um, let's see. I think either 444 or Big Crit album deserves album of the year. Big Crit is so album, underrated. So I haven't listened to the new Big Crit album yet. Sorry. I'm, I'm a Crit fan. I just... It's a lot going on in my life. Y'all know who know me know what it is. But um, 444 is such a great album. And Damn by Lupe, Lupe Fiasco is also great, great, great album. I'm the one by um, by DJ Khaled was a big song, but I hated that song. I thought it was terrible. I really did not think that song was good at all. So, yeah, that those were the top songs from 20. 20- 17 as far as it goes from hip-hop now of course we also got other songs um like ed sharon shape of you which was written by candy from escape shout out to candy from escape for 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 continuing to show that you know us 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 uh 80s babies ain't that old you know we can still make we can still make hits so shout out to her for that uh despacito was major this year um got got uh justin bieber singing in spanish even though he actually knew none of the words that he was saying he had no idea what he was singing about which is never a good idea what's up marvel what's up mike how you doing um let's see what else we have was big songs this year i already talked about Curdy. body like a back road Body Like a Back Road. Okay, so that song is a country song by this guy named Sam Hunt. Hunt. But that song is so dope. And the funny thing is I actually heard about it from students at my elementary school who were like, Mr. Lewis, play Body Like a Back Road. It's a country song. I was like, okay, cool. It's a country song. It can't be, it can't be that bad, right? It's a country song. You know, it's not going to have cursing in it. But apparently it's about a very curvaceous woman. So Sam Hunt and these country boys is really getting on this whole curvy mafia thing. Like I, I, I can appreciate that. I can, I can, I can, I can get jiggy with that. So bite like a back road. Great song. Sorry, not sorry by Demi Lovato. Also a big song this year. Um, again, if you have some songs that, that I didn't mention that you want to, you want to, you want me to talk about, please make sure you put them in the comment section so I can come, so I can refer to them. Um, but I don't want to stay there too long. And also a song that I talked about last week, the weekend by SZA. Apparently, women really love that song because it's about, oh, clarification. It's not about a woman cheating with a, a married man. It's about three women who are sharing one guy, and she wants the weekend job. Is that a better message than what we talked about last week? Probably not. Just saying. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's, that, that's, that's amazing. 
that um that that happened. Okay, let's see. Let me back to my notes. Yeah, man, but it's been a big year for music. It's been a big year for music, and here we are at the end of 2017, just just ready for a new year. Yeah, I know, Miss Lenora. I know that's it's not a great message for the for the young ladies, but you know what they like is what they like. You know, um, I always think about it like this: when I was younger, I was singing some stuff as a kid that you probably shouldn't sing as a kid, but I didn't realize that I was singing it. Just being honest with you. Um, and, and and that ends up being what it is. It's sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy in that way where you continue to, to create this kind of um, material for young people to listen to. Um, I mean, I listen to, th- I mean, like I sing, I sing. If, for those who don't know, I grew up, before I was talking in front of people, before I was doing anything else, I was chorus nerd. I was a gleek. I was, I was the guy who sang in the courtyard all the time. And if you know me, if you really know me, you know what time it is with that. Um, so um, I used to walk around singing songs like Joe's, all the things, all the things your man won't do. Ugh. Like that's not a great song for kids to be singing in the courtyard in high school. But I was, and I was singing it from the top of my lungs. Do you know why? Because that's what was on the radio and that's what I heard, which is why we should probably be more careful with the stuff that we're putting on the radio. But as opposed to going forward with that, we're going backwards, which is another issue for another episode of Real Talk with Rajan. Yeah, so that's those are the big moments from this year. You know, I talked about sports. Oh, I haven't talked about sports. That's the one I didn't talk about. So top sports moments from this year. The first one that comes to mind for me is the Super Bowl. Now, I know I got some of my sports, my sports fans in here who watched the Super Bowl last year. And if you know I'm talking about the Super Bowl, then you know what's coming next. There was a game that was going on between the Patriots and the Falcons. And the Patriots were down 28 to 3. And somehow, some way, the Patriots won the Super Bowl. Why? Because Falcons. Because Falcons. All right? Because Falcons. So let's that 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 definitely was um the top for me, the most memorable sports moment from this year was uh, this, 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 um, excuse me, the, oh, that's not right. The Falcons blowing the lead in the Super Bowl. And I, I will never, ever understand how they blew a 25 point lead in the Super Bowl. But I'm pulling up my, um, pulling up my article that I was looking at earlier. Somehow I clicked cleared out of the screen that I was in. All right, other big um, sports moments this year. Of course, the protests, which we've already dug into, so I'm not going to go back there very much. It's not for sports stories. Let's just see stories. And thank y'all for rolling me again. Thank you for watching Real Talk with I try not to have like weird pauses because, you know, people unclick when you get like weird pauses and stuff. But let's see, year interview, top sports stories, New York Daily News. There we go. Let's see, we got, thank you guys for rocking with me. I really appreciate it. We talked about the protests. I'm not going back there again. Um, Eli Manning was benched. That was big um, for for people in New York. Um, Eli Manning had the the, the NFL record. Um of the active record for most starts at, at um and that that was big um him getting benched um sexual harassment that that's been a big case that just hit the um sports world really let me copy this story so y'all can see it when you check in on it um, yeah, but it, it, it just hit the, 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 the sports game. Like, but you know, people in power have people with money have been doing things like this for a really long time. And it's just that now we're in an era where that's not okay anymore. And like I said, I think that's a good thing. Now I've also read some stories that have really made me question some of this stuff and where people are taking this. Um, and I don't want to go there now because this is the end of the year review and not an editorial, so I'm not going to do an editorial. I'm not going to expound on that on that topic. Aaron Hernandez committed suicide in prison this year. That was big. Um, if you don't know, Aaron Hernandez was the um, 
Patriots player who got convicted of a double homicide and ended up going to prison. And while he was in prison, he committed suicide. Um, Shailen Flanagan, shout out to Shailen Flanagan and the ladies. Shailen Flanagan was the first woman to win the New York City Marathon in 40 years. First American woman. There were other other women. Uh, she was the first American woman in 40 years to win the New York City Marathon. So shout out to the ladies. Stand up for the ladies. It's been a big year for the ladies in many ways um, for doing that. So shout out to her for winning. That's that's amazing that she did that. I could not win a marathon at all. I could not run a marathon. I probably used to could have, but I could not now. The Houston Astros win the, win the Super World Series. Who cares? Because they beat my Yankees on the way to do it. Conor, McGle- Conor McGregor voice versus the Floyd Mayweather fight. That was huge, right? That was major. Um, even if you didn't pay for the fight, which I refused to pay for the fight. I went to the homie Javon's house and watched the fight. Shout out to Javon. Um, because they paid for the fight. I wasn't gonna pay for the fight. Um, but it was it was not a great fight because you had a MMA fighter versus a boxer in a boxing match. As I've always said, you take anybody who's an amateur in one thing and put them into something with somebody who's professional in that thing, and the person who's a professional is gonna win. It's and it's not gonna be close. Um, let's see. Am I missing any comments? I'll make sure I'm not missing any comments. All right, let's see. Oh, Steelers fan Patriots. Diddy and Colin. Yeah, Diddy and Colin buying the Panthers. They're not going to buy the Panthers. That's not going to happen, Miss Lenora. I love you, though. Um, hey, Michelle. What's going on? Thank you so much for joining. Um, and right now, I'm, I'm going through the um, the top sports moments of 2017. I've already done um, top um, most viral mm-hmm. moments. I've done uh, top songs, and now I'm doing top uh, sports, sp- sports moments. Um, ESPN. Um, suspending Jamel Hill, that was major. She was suspended. If you don't remember, Jamel Hill was suspended for her comments about President Trump. Yeah, um, she 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 pretty much went at the the president, and then she um and made a statement that um if you have a problem with with what Jerry Jones said, then you should not watch uh, the NFL. Which is interesting. Let's see. I didn't either. I just watched it from people who, yeah, the fight. Yeah, you know what it is. What's up? I'm gonna get there, Juwan. Stop playing, man. First, first uh, American African bobsledding team. Yeah, that's right. First African women bobsledding team. Yeah. Uh, we'll we'll talk about we'll talk about the about Clemson. We'll talk about Clemson. Just just hold on. Just hold on. But yeah, Jamel Hill getting suspended was a big deal. Um, and you know, I'm glad she's back at ESPN and she's doing her thing. She's a great, she's a great um, analyst, and she's a great representative of all people of color. I stand behind Jamel Hill. Real Talk Rajan stands behind Jamel Hill. Um, that's the thing we say all the time. If you stand for nothing, you fall for anything. And she's definitely one who lives by that credo, and she stands up for it, and she's a good representative of what we all should be when it comes to standing up for what we believe in against all costs, against all costs. This year, uh, Tiger Woods got that DUI and had that crazy picture on the Internet. That was big. Remember that? Um, that was that was a big thing. Giancarlo Stanton, y'all don't really care about that. Page just won the Super Bowl. We talked about that. Phil Jackson got fired. Melo got traded. Melo got traded to um the Thunder, which is not going to be a big deal when they get kicked out of the playoffs in the second round. So I'm not going to really talk a whole lot about that. Moving on. Let's see. Aaron Judge, no. Golden State won the championship. Who cares? Well, I'm just kidding. Golden State, shout out to Golden State for winning the championship. Good job. Um, LeBron James and and uh, Donald Trump got into a, a, a verbal spat on the social media. That was interesting, watching that happen. Then Kyrie Irving requested a trade, which is also very interesting. Now he's in, in uh, Boston. That's going to be really interesting when they get kicked out of the playoffs by the team that he just requested a trade from. But, hey. Got to live that mamba life. And definitely shout out to the Clemson Tigers led by Deshaun Watson for winning the NCAA football championship. Shout out to them for winning the NCAA football championship. The first one, I think, since like the 80s, like 1981, first South Carolina football championship in the state of South Carolina since 1981. I think the 80, I think it was 81. I was born in 81, so I'm going to say 81. Um. That was big, but even bigger than that, 
Shout out to Don Staley and the Lady Gamecocks for winning the national championship. That's a big deal for the state. USC got one. Clemson got one. South Carolina stand up. Ask about us. You know what we do. We win championships. And then we got Carolina going in the soup going going uh Carolina, sorry. Got Clemson going against Bama. And what I think is the pre is, is the next natty. Whoever wins the Bama Clemson game is gonna win the national championship. So we'll be talking about Clemson for another national championship, I'm pretty sure, but we'll see. Um so yeah, that was the big sports stories for this year. Um so we went through sports, we went through music, we went through uh, politics, um, things to follow going into 2017. Um, what's going to happen with um, this Russia investigation? That's been something that's been really big that we need to min- continue to keep our eyes on. How is this tax reform bill that was just passed? How is that going to change um, the, the um, dialogue and you know what's going on and um, the systems and that we're that we've instituted in this program in, in this country? There are lots of things, and I want to say this: there were a lot of people that complained about certain things that President Obama did not did or didn't do during his um during during his term his administration as president and i want to i want to juxtapose juxtaposition you with this question if president obama didn't do anything during his term as president what is it exactly that president trump has spent his first year doing because it hasn't been enacting new legislation it's been rolling back every advantage that president obama has tried to give people who are not rich now, rather or not you're willing to look at the facts and see that is on you, but it definitely is there. It's definitely there. So, you know, not to call anybody out or, you know, anything like that, but you definitely need to look at if you if you're one of the people who believe that President Obama didn't do anything in his first, in his two terms as president. I want you to ask yourself, what is it that has been the GOP agenda since they've gotten started? started with the Trump administration. And that, from what I've seen, has been to counteract everything that President Obama achieved for people who are not rich. Look at the tax reform bill. Look at the things that have happened. Those aren't good for you. Those aren't good for me. I don't know about you, but when you consider that a middle-class American, they're talking about tax cuts for middle-class Americans, middle-class Americans starts at $250,000 a year. You make $250,000 a year? Because I don't. And even if I did, I wouldn't support a bill that guts. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm not supposed to be doing that. I'm not supposed to be doing that today. This is a year end review, and I'm reviewing the end of the year. Plus, my time is almost up. So, um, I guess to close, I'm just going to talk about, you know, what this year has been for me. Um, this year has been a great year of growth. Um, for me. How you doing, Linwood? Thank you so much for joining me, man. I appreciate you coming on board. Um, this has been a big year for me, um, personally, professionally. Um, I've, I've been able to do this show for a year and really meet some really cool people. I, I spoke about a lot of those guests that came on um, early on. Um, Shamik, uh, Shakima Chapman um, from Chapman Realty Group, um, Mike London, uh, Councilman Mike London, uh, Anjane Davis, uh, Miss Lenora, um, Lenora Cash, Samuel Bellamy, um, David Spell. Like, I, I don't know. I can't remember all the names, but everybody, if, if you've been on this show, if you've watched this show, I am so thankful for your support. Um, I also have to take this time um, to, to thank my wife, uh, Latoya Lewis, who, who, who was also a guest on my show several times and has really uplifted me through all of this, when I'm frustrated and I don't want to do it because I'm like, I'm tired or, you know, whatever. Um, she's always the first person to uplift me and make me feel like I can do anything. Um, baby, I love you. I love you so much. And I appreciate everything you do um, to make sure that I can keep going at the rate that I go. And I know that I go fast and I know that, that I do a lot, but my goal and my hope and the point of all of this is for us to go far together as a family. So thank you, thank you, thank you. To my children, all of them, RJ, Isis, Vari, Tasha, Ariana, thank y'all for being quiet while I'm recording. 
I really appreciate that. You don't, you, you could be those annoying kids that's always making noise in the background and I have to fuss and say, stop y'all, stop. But I don't have to do that because y'all are great kids. I could not be prouder to have another group of kids than you guys. You guys are the best. Today is my daughter Tasha's 14th birthday. Happy birthday, Tasha. I love you, baby. I don't know if you're watching this show or if you're eating with Mimi, but either way, daddy loves you. You are a superstar and you're going to do great things, much greater things than daddy's ever done. Like I, I know that. And that's all my kids. I really, I really know that you guys are going to be special. Um, to every viewer that's ever watched this show, thank you. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. I can't thank you enough. I have lots of things that I want to do in the future that I, I, you have no idea how many things I have in the works right now. But I believe that I can do it because of you. And if you believe in me, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's your love, it's your support, it's your prayers, it's your um, push that keeps me going forward. When I can't take another step, you guys motivate me. You guys keep me going. So thank you for your support and thank you for all you do. Thank you for all you do. I really can't thank you enough. And that's really my year in review. So thank you for watching this week. And remember that the show is now split into two parts, okay? Um, Wednesdays at 7 p.m., I interview local celebrities. Um, and this week's actually going to be a really special uh, 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 Wednesday because I'm going to have a panel discussion with um, Just, Justin Farnsworth of the Dorchester District 2 School Board. I'm going to have Anjane Davis. He was on before. He's coming back on again Um and if you watched him before, you know the, the wealth of wisdom that this young man has. Samuel Bellamy, he was also on the show before. One of my best friends and somebody I really look up to in, in, a, in a massive way. They're going to be on talking about education and um, where, where we like solutions, realistic solutions for the future. Oh, Randy, shout out to Randy the dog. Shout out to Randy. You're the best, Randy. Best dog ever. Um, but yeah, we're going to have uh, Wednesday night at seven, we will be doing the um, uh, education uh, education panel discussion. Please join us right here on Real Talk with Rajan Wednesday night um, at seven o'clock. Of course, on Sunday, I'll be doing my normal live show. So join me with that. And of course, um, be sure to tune in because all of these will be shows you don't want to miss. And don't be the one left out because you didn't tune in. In the meantime, please feel free to please follow me on all my social media formats um, or pick one to follow me on um, to stay up to date on what's happening with Real Talk on Twitter. I'm at Real Talk Rajan on Facebook is at Real Talk with Rajan on YouTube. I am at Real Talk with Rajan and on Periscope. I am Real Talk Rajan. So please, please, please feel free to leave comments, questions and whatever you'd like to say in the comment section. I love reading your messages and getting the feedback, even if it's negative. I'm not too big to grow. I'm not too big to grow. In closing, always remember that if a man doesn't stand for something, he'll fall for anything. Now that's real talk. Y'all have a happy new year. Be safe. Pray. 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 I love y'all. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them. T, yo, bless up. Bless up. This t-shirt, okay, sorry. This t-shirt is actually by a company, all right? Bless up, bless up, bless up. If you like this shirt, let me know. I will get shoot you the link so you can order your own. But bless up, bless up, bless up. Support our locals. Support our locals. And if you have something that you want me to wear on the air or something like that, shoot me. Let me know. So here, Rajana got an idea. I would, I would, would you would you mind you know wearing it on the show if it's a hat? I love hats, even though my hair will be growing pretty long pretty soon. But I love hats. T-shirts. All right. I support local T-shirts. Send them to me. Um, I love to support you guys, man. Thank you. Do you have any comments? I'm going to stick around a little bit and answer your questions. Happy New Year. Bless up, bless up, bless up. Thank you, Linwood. You got t-shirts, Miss Lenora? All right. Hit me with a t-shirt. I'll wear it. Link, please. Oh, there we go. See? Bless up. I got you, Lucretia. 
shirt coming. And also, Real Talk with Rajan shirts. I also have those. I'm going to figure out a way to get them out to people this year. I don't know how. But we're going to do it. Happy New Year. Peace.